Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Dirt Vision is home to the greatest shows on dirt, led by World of Outlaw Sprint Cars, the pinnacle of dirt racing. If you can't be at the track, Dirt Vision is the only place to watch the outlaws and the most powerful late models on the planet. You also get the Super Dirt Car Series, Dirt Car Summer Nationals, and Extreme Outlaw Midgets. Dirt Vision brings you nearly 500 live races, including weekly racing at America's premier tracks. See them all with a Dirt Vision Fast Pass. There are flexible options so both casual and hardcore fans can live stream races on multiple devices. You also get 2,000 classic races free in our video vaults, along with Dirt Vision QuickTime, Off Days Features, and our 24-7 streaming channel, Dirt Vision Now. Register for free or buy your Fast Pass now at DirtVision.com or on the Dirt Vision app. And welcome to round number seven of the World of Outlaws Butt Kicker Late Model Series, powered by iRacing, as we head to Williams Grove Speedway, one of the racetracks that always puts on a fantastic show with this series, and excited to see who comes out on top. Tim Terry and Terry Radford here to call the action with you. And Terry, this place always gives us a great show. As these drivers get ready for qualifying, this is going to be a, uh, an exciting round to, to kind of uh, set us up for this championship stretch. Yeah, it's much different than what we had last week at I-55 where Kendall Tucker uh, took his very first victory. A lot more racing can happen here. A little bit flatter as you take a look uh, at our schedule, Williams Grove Speedway, where we are tonight. Then we go to my personal favorite, uh, the, Epis or the, the Mega Center uh, for dirt racing at Eldora. And then we take a day off or a week off where we go to Lincoln Speedway. And then, man, Tim, we got to say goodbye to everybody September 18th. Yeah, it's hard to believe the season has flown by, but uh, this is where that uh, that stretch comes in. You mentioned that off week in a couple of weeks' time kind of has an opportunity for these drivers to breathe a little bit and set up for those final two races. And speaking of, it's Evan C on top, and then everybody is kind of chasing, and there's uh, something to race for back there. 69 points between C and Tucker 
long way to go. But then you look back at the top 15. That is the uh, bubble. That's the relegation. If you finish in the top 15, you retain your license for the next season. If you finish outside, well, you got some work to do to claw back in. Right now, Damian Keeper has that final position. Uh, but Tomasi and everybody else behind, not too far back here, still having a chance with a few races left to go. Yeah, still has an opportunity to get in, and we see this shift quite often. There's some drivers missing in the field here tonight uh, from what we saw in the practice session. A lot of opportunities to get yourself up. You think of a person like Tristan Latticer uh, who needs a good run here. Dylan Fox, Talon, Wilson, or Talon, Talon Willis, he just kind of had some in the beginning of the season and then started to fall off a little bit. My eyes on Tanner Tomasi tonight. Uh, I was watching him just a little bit in practice. I, I think if he can get to the uh, to the feature, he might be a force uh, for a potential top five here tonight. Still a few moments left to go, but he is currently 15th when it comes to qualifying. But speaking about this racetrack, Terry, this one is a good one here tonight at Williams Grove. Yeah, down there in uh, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, small little uh, small little town there. A half mile here this afternoon, something different. No surprise, Evan C was your winner, but built in 1939, they nicknamed it the Grove, and well, it's uh, it, it's definitely going to put on one heck of a show here tonight for us. And you mentioned we are short a few drivers here this evening, Terry. We have 27 here tonight. We are missing eight drivers, and uh, some of those drivers had prior commitments, but these ones did not. And surprise, surprise, Terry, who's on the poll? Well, it was a top four for Majulis C Speed Shop here in heat number one with Blake Majulis, Dylan Yeager, uh, your front row, Drew Hopkins and Robbie Buchanan Jr. They're in row two, Landon Francis and Talon Willis back there in, in row number three with uh, the Speed Ranch drivers uh, filling out the rest of this field with Chase Hardy, Tristan Latticer and Caden Honeycutt rounding out the nine drivers for heat race number one. So as we get ready to go racing here this evening, we will have three heat races, eight laps each. We will take those top four and move them on due to the low car count or the lower car count, Terry. We only have three heat races this evening. Uh, we will decide everybody else in the feature through the last chance showdowns, which will be 10 laps each of you are joining us for the first time here this season. There are no caution flags in the heats and the last chance showdowns. Uh, if somebody wrecks or something happens, they're gonna have to get up on the wheel and make it through a last chance showdown uh, in order to get into the feature. The feature is slated for a 20 car starting grid. There is the look at your first heat race and these are going to be exciting. Elbows up for eight laps with the top four advancing. Yeah, this is about to be really, really fun. And I, I with the temperature here, you take a look at the, the winter conditions, 80 degrees, seven mile per hour winds. We've seen wind become a factor in these races on Monday nights. The track temperature uh, is really, really suitable for some dirt racing. But if you look at the top four, the teammates there, I will be very shocked to see if, if Robbie Buchanan Jr. kind of plays defense just a little bit, just to try to get Drew Jaeger and Majulis moving on and kind of play the, the spoiler back there from fifth on back. Yes, the field rolls. You kind of saw it with that starting grid graphic. Five of the top six uh, with Majulis C speed shop. So somebody is going from that team to a last chance showdown. And you know that those five drivers that were starting in the top six, they don't want to be that one driver that falls out and has to take the long road to get to the feature here this evening as Majulis and Jaeger are going to lead this field to green. And uh, Blake's had, a, a, for the most part, it's been an up season, Terry. He had a couple of bumps in the road, but looking to smooth that over as we race here this afternoon or this evening at Williams Road. Yeah, he had a couple. He had a couple of uh, couple bad weeks and missed the race uh, not too long ago at, at Knoxville. Uh, just man had to come back strong. And last week didn't have too bad of a showing, uh, but uh, he's definitely going to have to come in here tonight. He he set it off real well. I mean, he finished 11th last week. He he lost his string of one one two as when he missed the show at Knox and then at I-55 coming home 11th. He's going to have to get out of it tonight.
And a great way to do it is to lead this field to green. Set the fast time in qualifying to Blake Majulis. He will start in the pole in heat race number one. A first of three heats this evening will take the top four and move them directly into the feature here at Williams Grove. Watch Dylan Yeager on the outside. He's had a couple of rough weeks as well. Green flag flies. Those two get single file. It's the battle in behind for position number three. Bottom lane already starting to provide some little dominance there as Blake Majulis steps away with the race lead. You see three wide a little further on back. That's going to be, you get it, oh no! And around he goes, and that's the back two drivers of Willis and Francis. They're going to lose a lot of time there. That's a guaranteed last chance showdown race as the battle for the lead starting to heat up again. Yeah, that battle for the top spot continues to heat up. Majulis and Jaeger, your top two. There's Buchanan on that. The first blue car in line behind is Chase Hardy. Well, not behind anymore. Moves to the inside, looks to pick up position number four right on the back as they go diving down into the turn. And just behind, Latticer looking to make one more. Hello, sideways. They go a little contact battle for the bubble down the three. That's a great battle for the bubble. It's, it's uh, now four cars under a blanket there as they rocket down the back straightaway. And you think about that for Chase Hardy. He's had a couple good runs in this in these races. We go on board uh, with our Texas State of Behave Cutting on who has the great view of this one. I kind of had to back up just a little bit when Harding and Buchanan made contact there. Now you've got to, you're halfway through. Now you got to reset your focus and say, okay. Let's go. Now it's go time uh, to get yourself in this top four. As they continue to battle, Caden needs to get a couple more spots out of this one to either move himself directly into the feature or get himself a better starting position in the last chance showdown as they continue to battle. Great move there by Buchanan to kind of pinch off that inside to pick up position number four for the time being. Hardy's going to try to get to the bottom of Latticer here as Buchanan kind of controls this battle up in front. Those three behind playing a little bit of chase here as we're in the second half of this heat. Well, you saw right there, Buchanan got just a little bit up the racetrack in the corner, allowed Latticer to get to the back bumper of it. Chase Hardy starting to fall off just a little bit as we go on here uh, with the Tennessee driver of uh, the 31, looking back behind him at Tristan Latticer in the number 92. He just, man, he's got, he's got a lot of focus right there, just, just chilling out, knowing that he's got the transfer spot as we said. Final lap of competition in heat race number one is the Number 31 of Buchanan looks back to the rest of this field. Top two have kind of broken away. Dylan Yeager chasing down Blake Majulis. He will not get there, though. Heat race number one goes to Majulis. Yeager comes home in a second. Hopkins comfortably in third in that one. And as you saw, Robbie Buchanan Jr. holding on for that fourth and final transfer spot. Fifth is Latticer, sixth is Hardy, Honeycutt, seventh, Willis and Francis tangled early in this one, Terry. They are going to finish eighth and ninth, respectively. They will go to a last chance showdown to try to decide their fate, whether they make it in to round number seven at Williams Grove. And what a what a race for Blake Majulis. You've caught up with him. Well, Blake Majulis, you uh, you're starting to get the, uh, the monkey off your back, the bad luck you've had the past two weeks with not making the field and finishing 11th. But the best place to do it is on the pole. What's your chances tonight going into this race that you can win it? Uh, just, you know, keep keep the nose clean and, uh, you know, get ho hopefully just get 50 clean laps in and uh, look forward the whole time. But uh, I think we got a good shot if we can just be smart with it and, and play the game smart here. Well, we'll see you there on the pole position uh, this afternoon and best of luck in the race. Thank you, sir. That's Blake Majulis from uh, Majulis East Speed Shop, Tim. Yeah, we're going to get ready for heat race number two. And here it comes full field of nine cars. Who do we got? Well, top four lockout again for uh, for the boss man and the uh, the co-owner there. Evan C gets this uh, pole position for heat race number two, but Kendall Tucker, last week's winner to the outside. Colton Zimmer and Mike Augustine will be your uh, your row two starters with Nathan Waddell and Barrett Bishop, row three. Then you got Damian Kiefer, who's trying to get in uh, and stay inside that top 15 in points with Ethan Toder, who did swap teams here. He's a part of Speed Ranch now, and Logan Herbert rounding out the nine drivers to take in the heat race number two. So again, you look at the top six positions, and five of those drivers are from that Majula C Speed Shops. They have their stuff together 
here this evening. And you look at the field, and we are doing a little bit of racing this evening for some cash. 300, 200, and 100 for the top three. Podium finisher is going to come out with a little bit of extra green in their pocket. But Terry, first place in the overall championship. Not only do you retain your license for next season, you get $10,000 for it. Yeah, show me the money. That's what I want to see. I want to see $10,000. It's a good tax write-off, too. Make that tax return look pretty good to start the uh, 2024 season uh, for you when you throw a little bit of money in the iRacing and rig. But you might be able to get a new butt kicker. Maybe yours got wore out here. And uh, what better place than the uh, World of Outlaw Butt Kicker Lake Model Series than to, you know, to represent a little bit. So the field rolls off, and the 33 of Evan C is going to be your pace setter. Obviously, Evan won this championship last season. He knows what it's like to take this championship check home and currently has a big lead when it comes to the championship chase. But as we've seen uh, with Blake Majulis, uh, you miss one race and you lose a little bit of ground. Evan C continuing to click off those good finishes, get those top five runs and remain in control of the championship. But Terry, as you mentioned, Kendall Tucker knows a thing or two now about winning in this series as well. This season uh, picked up the most recent one. Yeah, and I'm no mathematician on Evan C, but first, second, second, first, third, second, that's pretty good average. Uh, like I said, not the, not the brightest bulb in the box, but averages across the board, he has set the standard. Granted, he's over here uh, trying to start outside front row this afternoon and has a great opportunity to lock it out for Majula C Speed Shops. But uh, you keep talking Kendall Tucker. He has the monkey off his back as well. He has an opportunity to come up here and go two for two uh, and just try to go back to back to carry the momentum to maybe go up there and beat the 33 this year. And the great thing about these three heat races this evening, they're all nine cars, and it's the stacked field of talent. And by the way, we're only taking four. Here comes the green flag. We are underway for heat race number two. Evan C gets the jump that he needs. Tucker in a second. Then keep your eye behind. Little contact. Oh, big contact right there, and it's six of them now. Uh, beating and banging doors, and all around they go. Back in the back, I think that's uh, Bishop, Kiefer, and Toter all back there in a wad with each other, and that's not what Damian Kiefer wanted because now he goes to a last chance showdown, and that could spell trouble. If he misses this race, he falls out of that license spot for next season, but there's your teammates right there on the top of the screen at the bottom that race for the transfer, Tim. It's getting hot and heavy down here. Yeah, you mentioned Barrett Bishop there as well. He's 10th in the championship standing, so he cannot afford to miss a feature. Battle for position number four, Nathan Waddell trying to hold on over that white car in behind him of Augustine. And here comes Herbert in the red and white number six as he tries to pick up a couple of spots. Battle for the transfer, and oh, by the way, the battle for the lead. Here comes Kendall Tucker. Yeah, you got all sorts of fight going on here. The heat, heat race number two is definitely not disappointing this afternoon. It's, you see Mike Augustine, he looks to the inside of Nathan Waddell. He slid up a little bit, got it straight, made a slight bit of contact, but oh yeah, here comes Logan Herbert, three wide for the transfer spot. And there goes the six to the inside, up the hill goes Augustine, and there oh. Waddell goes uh, into the back of the 19, and they, uh, they kept it somewhat straight, but there was a lot of momentum lost there, so now they're gonna have to get up on the wheel to catch those top four. Oh, by the way, we got a battle for the lead. Yeah, we do, and uh, momentum is a massive thing, and Kendall Tucker's coming into this race right here at Williams Grove Speedway with a ton of momentum. Uh, he's, he's got it all put together. Potentially his heat race package is not as good as his feature package. We'll have to find out uh, here in uh, just a little bit. As he looks to the inside here, it's side by side for the race lead. Tucker trying to make something happen on CC to the upside. Kendall Tucker trying to go to the inside. Colton Zimmer having a great run, sitting in position number three. As you look back, uh, fourth place has a little bit of an advantage on that fifth place of Nathan Waddell. As you look back from Herbert, there's, uh, there's a little bit of real estate there, Terry. Yeah, and that's about the distance from, I, I believe, Hollywood, California, to, to Locust Grove, Georgia, <laughs> where Logan Herbert's from. He's got the real estate from him. He might sell you some oceanfront property in Arizona. We are getting ready to come to the checkered flag, though. Kendall Tucker to the inside. Try to make something happen there through three and four, but it's not going to make a difference as Evan C will pick up the victory. Tucker had a run down to that third corner, just could not make it happen. Zimmer and Herbert come home in third and fourth. They will transfer in. Waddell and Augustine had that little bit of contact. 
they are going to a last chance showdown, as are Barrett Bishop, Damian Kiefer, and Ethan Toter. Two heat races done. We'll bring you back to heat race number three coming up after this. Call us outlaws. <laughs> we don't mind. We're your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, the stranger you pass on the street. We may walk to the beat of our own drum, but we'll also give you the shirt off our back. We have an unapologetic toughness that can't be denied. We're not just tough. We're outlaw tough. The World of Outlaws Butt Kicker Late Model Series is brought to you by Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. Pick up your butt kicker today at thebuttkicker.com. And by World of Outlaws Dirt Racing. Available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. Drive like an outlaw. Welcome back to Williams Grove and Terry. We just saw two exciting heat races to set the first eight positions in round number seven for the World of Outlaws Buck Kicker Late Model Series powered by iRacing. We've got one more heat to go. Nine cars. We're taking four. Who's in this one? Well, we'll start off with the winner at Knoxville with Logan Rumsey starting on the pole. Dylan Wilson to the outside. J.D. Brown and Tucker Elkins. Uh, your second row with the teammate down there, Tanner Tomasi and Desmond Busby. Uh, your top six. And then your final three starters this afternoon, Brett Caudill, Chase Barbara, and Blake Murray. So nine cars, we are going to take the top four and move them directly on as you look back from Wilson to the rest of this field. And uh, we've got uh, lots to accomplish. And if you want to accomplish some racing yourself, you can do the same thing by heading over to iRacing.com and get your iRacing career started today. And Terry, did I hear the word sale? 40% off all new members constantly. I, I push this, oh, 60% now. Wow, I get, get more 15th anniversary. I forgot it's 15th anniversary and they're passing out credits, Tim Terry. Uh, for as many years as you've been on, they're putting a dollar in your account up to 15. 60% off for new members. If you're not on iRacing right now, what is wrong with you? This is the best thing you could be on. I love racing it. I'm trying, I got a kid coming. The kid's gonna have its own rig. And it's gonna have a, ri a rig, a mullet, and potentially, potentially an Earnhardt tattoo. Potentially. So do you remember the wife's anniversary though? You remember the iRacing, so you remember the what? wife's anniversary. You, you're, you and the wife. It's on my driver's license. Okay, perfect. <laughs> there, there you go. Can't, can't forget just, it. My license renews sure. on our anniversary. Just wanted to make sure you were good to go on that. But yeah, right. 15th anniversary of iRacing. Uh, get over and uh, let's have some fun uh, doing some racing. You want to learn more about this series as well, you can head to iRacing.com slash W-O-O-L-M and you can get uh, uh, all the information on this series and maybe how you can get involved and uh, sling some mud with us over here uh, on the Monday evenings for the World of Outlaws Bucking Your Late Model Series powered by iRacing. As the uh, field's going to roll off here momentarily, Terry, and we're going to get ready to send four more cars into the feature event and send everybody else, the other five, into one of two jam-packed Last Chance Showdowns. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're filling up with a ton of talent. And we say this every week, that this is always some of the most talented racing you're going to see on this platform is right here especially for dirt racing and 
Uh, think about some of the names that could miss this. Uh, Tanner Tomasi, Desmond Busby's had a good string uh, here at making the features. Chase Barbara uh, is starting way back there. This track presented a different challenge than every single other track that we've been to so far with the half mile uh, that we're on here this afternoon. I, I think if you dug back in your notes, you potentially say, oh, well, okay, Cedar Lake might have been the opportunity for us to learn here. But you also went through Port Royal, Knoxville, and I-55, and then you come back to this style of racetrack. These drivers are probably scratching their head going, man, who made this schedule? It's uh, throwing me off with the ebbs and flows that we're going with here. But it gives us some great racing and gives us some great trends and, and, and the like to follow. But Logan Rumsey going to start this one from the pole position. Keep your eye on that 41 winner already this season looking to tag on one more dylan wilson to the outside he's made all six features so far this season as well looking to make it a seventh here comes the green flag rumsey is on a green flag flies and jd brown to the inside looking for second yeah jd brown got a really good launch right there on wilson and Oh, Wilson got tagged in the back just a little bit right there. I believe that was by Tanner Tomasi. As you see three wide going on. Oh, somebody's getting turned there. Get all wrecking. Oh, man. That's all of them on back here yonder. And you're only going to have a battle for the transfer spot between Cardil, uh, Cardil and uh, Barbara. Yeah, that was a Busby that took that hard hit into the outside guardrail and kind of bounced out into the field as we stay green flag racing. And uh, you take a look at the second and third place battle trying to close up the Rumsey just in behind uh, is Caudell in the number 93. And he's being chased down by Chase Barber. Now keep in mind in that battle in behind, Caudell has not made a feature yet so far this season. Chase has made all six. So just uh, put that back in the, in the memory bank in case we need it in about five laps time. Yeah, and we'll see how aggressive that uh, the, the 23 of Chase gets. It, it, potentially, you don't want to run in this in this craziness. You, you take a look right here at Brett Cook. He's it got a good little gap right here. I, I do like the VR headset that he's got going on there as well. It uh, always makes me happy when I see people driving like that. But he's doing a really good job of just managing what he has to manage. Don't worry about what's behind you at this moment. You got one car. That's it. Don't worry about what's in front of you. Just drive your own race. You have nothing to lose here. Uh, just just roll with it. We're going to come to three laps to go. And right back there is Blake Murray as well. If these two do get close, if Chase Barber is able to close the gap and something does happen in between those two, Blake Murray's not that far behind that he could pounce, but he would need both positions in order to get there. we got a battle for the lead on our hands. Logan Rumsey, J.D. Brown, and Dylan Wilson are putting on a show here. Yeah, if you want to talk about some uh, some great dirt racing, you're looking at it right here at heat race number three. Rumsey's got a win this season. J.D. Brown does not. Wilson, uh, uh, Wilson doesn't have a win either. And they want to start up front. Track position is going to be the name of the game here this afternoon. It's a three-way fight for it. Coming to the white flag this time by J.D. Brown's got a whole mirror full of that number 80. It might not be that battle for fourth that upsets. It might be this battle for the lead that comes uh, a little bit to blows as the 80 of Dylan Wilson was underneath the 14 the last time down the back straightaway. Now they go for the final time down the back straightaway and J.D. Brown is looking at Logan Rumsey for the top spot. They go side by side for second. Rumsey in control. Can he hold it off at turn number four? They oh. slop contact in behind and Wilson is around. Checkered flag for Rumsey, J.D. Brown, Brett Cottle, and Chase Farbra are making it into the show. Blake Murray and Dylan Wilson after that last lap attempt to battle for second is going to a last chance showdown. Desmond Busby, Tanner Tomasi, and Tucker Elkins, your field. We'll step away and figure that all out and bring you back to two last chance showdowns after this. You say you can't wait to get to the track to pick up the latest World of Outlaws gear? Slide on over to worldofoutlaws.com to get your NOS energy drink, sprint cars, and case late model hats, decals, hoodies, and other great souvenirs. Buy $50 worth of merchandise and get free shipping anywhere in the continental United States. Why stand in line? Buy your outlaw gear online. Visit the Outlaw General Store online today at worldofoutlaws.com.
The World of Outlaws Butt Kicker Late Model Series is brought to you by Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. Pick up your butt kicker today at thebuttkicker.com. And by World of Outlaws Dirt Racing. Available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. Drive like an outlaw. Welcome back to Williams Grove, and three heat races are completed. Our third heat race went to Logan Rumsey, and he is caught up with Terry Radford. Yeah, we got the driver from Manchester, Pennsylvania. Logan, uh, you come in here with a good bit of momentum, and uh, you have made every single feature thus far. You keep that tradition here this afternoon. You're going to start P3. Uh, win number two, potentially, tonight, question mark? Uh, yeah, I'll try. Um, I think this race is going to come down to um, your strategy and um, how, um, how you save your tires and stuff. So um, we'll just try to get our game plan settled out here and um, try to get it done. Well, we'll talk to you hopefully this afternoon. That's driver the number 41 for Alpha Industries, Tim. And Logan Rumsey going to have a third place starting position when we go racing later on this afternoon. And uh, the uh, uh, we get ready to go with uh, the last chance showdown number one. And Terry, footnote, we are taking four from each of these last chance showdowns into the main event because we did not have a fourth heat race. Who is in this first one? We got Tristan Lannister starting on the pole here this afternoon with Blake Murray. Uh, Mike Augustine and then Caden Honeycutt's back there uh, looking to rebound after uh, last week's disappointing run of the feature. Desmond Busby and Damian Kiefer, your top six. And then your final starter back there is going to be Landon Francis. If you look at that field, who, who, do you, who do you send to the house? We're taking four. You're going to send three back to the trailer, and I don't know who you're going to send back there. There's Landon Francis. Landon had a, a, a misstep in his heat race, and now he's going to be coming from a last chance showdown. Uh, he's got some work to do to try to get up to that top three and get a little bit of cash out of this one tonight. Yeah, uh, you got you to gotta hope that uh, you make the money per race payouts, but I think every single one of them is looking at that season prize. $10,000. I mean, the difference here uh, is $9,800 from first to 10th. I'm sure every driver, when they saw that, was like, man, 10 grand. That's a, I got a whole lot of stuff with that. Uh, there are a lot of things I can't say on here that you could buy with it. A couple cold uh, refreshments, maybe an ice cold Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Uh, you got a lot of things you can get here uh, this afternoon. But hey, $10,000, to tell you, I, I would probably wreck my mother for $10,000. Now, we should mention as well, James Edens entered this evening seventh in the championship standings. I believe he's doing a little bit of real-world racing this evening, or at least uh, with a crew. So uh, he's going to fall back a little bit in the standings. We'll see how far he does fall back. James was one of those drivers that did make every feature of the season to this point. Uh, Cameron Kaysen, Loic Bernier, Dylan Fox, Travis St. Clair, Jeremy Steele, Peyton Stevenson, and Jesse Wall were the other drivers that did not answer the call to the green flag. Uh, this evening, Dylan Fox on the outside looking in of that top 15 uh, coming into this evening. So there's another one that's going to have to dig and dig deep here in the next few races. But you look at this field, Desmond Busby, Caden Honeycutt, Mike Augustine was on the wrong end of uh, a heat race altercation or a little bit of a set two uh, on his end. Latticer just barely missed out, Terry, on making it in to the feature through his heat race in a very entertaining battle. It's going to lead this one to green. Hopefully that track position helps him to get in to the feature later on. I think it's also going to take some desperation out of these drivers. You know, when we, we take two in the last chance showdowns, you have to be up on the wheel. The top two, if they are able to step away here on this initial restart, it's good. But we're taking four this afternoon. So it's the two we used to take before. Now we're taking four of them due to the low car count this afternoon. Yeah, but how do you send three home in this field? Green flag flies were underway. Three of these drivers are going to have to get up on the wheel. All seven of them here are very stout competitors and all have made features so far this season. Honeycutt has a little bit of a problem trying to get off the outside in turn number two. In front of them, Augustine going out in that white 19 to the outside. Hello, four wide behind. Yeah, four wide behind, and, and Honeycutt kind of got checked up just a little bit right there uh, by Desmond Busby when we went on that initial start. And 
uh, just got a little bit of a tag there and uh, washed him up the racetrack and now you see them they're all trying to fight for it this is so different than what we've seen the prior weeks there are four drivers going in uh, so that fight not necessarily for the race lead uh, but they're going to fight really really hard to get that fourth place spot to see honey cut to the outside of busby Remember in his heat race, Busby was the one that took the head-on shot into the back straightaway guardrail. So he's going to try to get up here and get at least one more spot. Honeycutt has that fourth and final transfer behind them. Here comes Damian Kiefer to the inside, almost three wide again, off of the corner. Landon Francis back there looking to make something happen. He needs three spots out of this one somehow. I think he might be able to get it here in just a second. He, he went in, dumped it in uh, three wide as, as Busby was to the outside. Kiefer was kind of in the sandwich in the middle for a second, but all of these drivers trying to find the line that's going to make it suitable for them around this racetrack. I, I thought coming into this race that we would be a bottom dominant show. They have been all over. They've been up against the wall. They've been down against the guardrails. They've been right smack dab in the middle. No driver has necessarily found anything as we go on board with the Duke Center Pennsylvania driver of Landon Francis. You know, Francis has been four wide a couple of times, and it's easier said than done. We can say it up here. He passes all three that he's three or four wide with, and he picks up a transfer. Hello, Keeper, way up the racetrack with that slide. There goes Busby back to the inside. He's going to pick up that spot one more time. There are your top four on your screen. Francis throws the slider in behind. Caden Honeycutt wants insurance, and oh, by the way, Blake Murray wants to lead. Yeah, Blake Murray definitely wants it here. He slides it into the corner. He'll go up. Lattister will look to the inside. He'll cross that one over uh, down the back straightaway. He'll go into the corner and make that run again. He'll put the, put the race leader back out where he was originally at. And you go, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to go three wide with Honeycutt looking over August. You can see almost jackknifed him there on the front straightaway. Lots of great racing and lots of respect by these drivers. A couple of slide jobs being thrown, but everybody for the most part, keeping this one clean in this last chance shout out. Augustine has that final transfer position now, trying to get back to the inside of Honeycutt behind them. Francis and Kiefer going at it for what is now position number six. Busby wants it to the inside. Slide job tries to get their little contact from Augustine to the 10 of Honeycutt. The gloves are off as Lattiser leads him down to the corner. Yeah, everybody in Canada should be standing up saying, oh, Canada our home and native land. Tristan Lattiser is potentially going to take the last chance showdown win here and put himself into the feature races. Look at him, the, the, the motion ring he's got there. He's got the smile on his face, but he needs to hold it for two more corners. Here comes Honeycutt to the inside of the 83 of Murray Lannister trying to hold on as they race down to the end. Look at that transfer position. Going to be Augustine picking that one up as Mike Augustine had to hold him off at the very end. Desmond Busby is going to the house early as he, Francis, and Kiefer will not make round number seven. Lattiser, Murray, Honeycutt, and Augustine. That was an impressive 10 laps. Lots of respect by those drivers. A little bit of contact, Terry, but no wrecks. That was impressive. Can't wait to see last chance showdown number two. But before we get there, uh, you've got some exciting news. Always exciting news when we're talking about the World of Outlaw Dirt Racing game that's available now on current Xbox and PlayStation platforms. The season update came out uh, on the 15th. It added Extreme Outlaw Midget Series presented by Toyota. Had three brand new racetracks with Lernerville Speedway, Lincoln, and the Chili Bowl. Uh, also added uh, Platinum Drivers for 2023. All new paint schemes for the Platinum Drivers in the 2023 NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series and and the 2023 Case Constructions Late Models. You got helmet tear-offs, career mode, championship mode, multiplayer, quick race. There is everything. 410s, 360s, 305 sprints, late models, street stocks. It does not matter what you want to do. And by the way, if you think the physics are great of what you're watching right now, well, it was tuned by the greatest physics people of all time. Those people from the iRacing platform with the full career mode featuring local, regional, and national events, 25 player multiplayer. Where else are you gonna find that on a console game? Drivers who came into this, uh, Giovanni uh, Sethsi, you got Tanner English, Todd Cooney, Hoffman, uh, it, DLC tracks like we talked about, I-55, and if you buy it today, the update is there. It's worldofoutlawsgame.com. Be there, be square. Come get the game and race with the legends.
You like that promo? That's how you throw a promo, Tim Terry. I, I could not have said it better myself, Terry. You did a great job. Now we're going to get you with the starting grid. Let's, let's go. Are we throwing the same energy out there? Absolutely. Nathan Waddell starts right here on the pole at Chase Hardy to the outside. Dylan Wilson back there on road two with Barrett Bishop. Talon Willis and Tanner Tomasi, your top six. And then your final two starters here this afternoon, Ethan Toder and Tucker Elkins. Four in, four out, 10 laps. We'll figure out who is where. And if you want to be a part uh, of this series and get immersed with this series, uh, put a face to a name, to a car, talk about championship standings, the schedule, all that stuff, you can find it at iRacing.com slash W-O-O-L-M for the World of Outlaws late models. Once again, iRacing.com slash W-O-O-L-M for everything. Uh, Buck Kicker late model series powered by iRacing as the field has tightened up and we are getting ready to send them off for 10 laps. And again, you, you look at the top four, it's going to be hard to, to beat, but a Talon Willis, uh, had some tough luck in his heat race. H had a really good start to his rookie season, Terry, but has hit a couple of speed bumps here the last couple of weeks. Uh, wants to turn this thing around and get into this feature. Yeah, he started out racing in the first two features. Uh, finished an eight and six, and then last chance showdowns kind of bit him. He finished one spot out at Cedar Lake and one spot out again at Knoxville. He just could not necessarily find the, the momentum to find the speed that he needed to get to the feature races. I, I hope that tonight's the time that the 22 turns it around and, and makes his way into this uh, into this feature race. And Nathan Waddell, I believe, has only made a couple of these as well. So keep your eye on the five. He's got something to prove here this evening. Hasn't had the luck this season to really go with the finishes and the speed that he has had. Green flag flies over Nathan is on and here comes Wilson to the inside. Wilson looking to pick up position number two on Hardy and keep your eye on Barrett Bishop, three wide for the lead. Well, you think about it, the 80 of Dylan, he missed the feature race and his heat race by about 50 feet. Can he do it here in the last chance showdown number two? You see the transfer line is painted red with a nice little line across the screen. Waddell leads this field. Here comes Wilson. He's going to look to the inside. Three wide again for the race lead. Where do you go if you're Dylan Wilson? Wilson has that little chip on his shoulder from that last lap, last turn wreck in his heat, and he wants to put it and the rest of this field behind him. He goes to the inside of the five, and in behind Barrett Bishop trying to hold off Talon Willis to transfer in. Willis needs one more, and they're almost three wide again. Trying to go three wide. They're three wide behind him, but that's not for the transfer spot. That's Tomasi, Toder, Elkins back there. Elkins is off the pace. He got caught up in a little bit of an incident with Toder. Uh, they made, they banged doors for a tad bit, but here comes Chase Hardy. He's going to look to the inside for the race lead into four. Bishop trying to get there. Reminder, we are taking four from this last chance showdown and moving them in to the feature. Top five in a line right now, looking to make something happen. Willis wants to be a part of the party, but who does he get by? You're right on board with Barrett Bishop, currently in position number four. He's under fire from uh, Willis, and that's, that's actually behind us, Tomasi. As you see up in front of him, there's that little bit of a gap. He needs to get up on the wheel. Yeah, he needs to do what the Kansas City Chiefs always do. Throw the Hail Mary with Patrick Mahomes, the man out of Pittsburgh, Kansas. He needs to get it done. He's hoping for those drivers up there in front of him to make some contact here and beating it bang, but he's losing them off the exit of the corner, center off. He just can't find that power. And down to the inside uh, one more time as uh, Toter tries to get one more spot away. Willis moves up ahead of Waddell. Now what does Waddell do? Goes to the inside, tries to throw a little bit of a slider. Barrett Bishop likes what he's seeing, trying to pull away from this battle for position number four on back. But uh, they are quickly running out of time. Dylan Wilson is your leader, trying to be chased down by Chase Hardy. Yeah, but you see that battle right here. That's the battle for third. They're starting to pull away from Waddell just a little bit here uh, for that transfer spot. Talon Willis, he drove up there and took it and said, hey, uh, check you later. We're going to come to two laps to go here. Will we see this fight continue? You see the side-by-side -side for that transfer spot with Willis down there in the green, Waddell in the, in the red, and I think he might have made a mistake there. Yeah, he needs to get a little bit more as the 10 of Willis tries to track down Bishop. 
Waddell needs to get up on the wheel and needs to get everything that he can out of this final lap and a half or so. Just ahead of them, Chase Hardy begins to put some pressure on Dylan Wilson as they are on the last lap. Down into one and two, the 80 of Wilson on the outside. Hardy trying to make something happen. These two, as long as they can keep it straight, will be in the show. Dylan Wilson found out in his heat race, you need to get out of four, you need to cross the line, and he is going to do so here. Dylan Wilson is in through his last chance showdown, albeit it took him a little bit of a longer road after his heat race. Chase Hardy, Barrett Bishop, Talon Willis, your top four, they are in. Nathan Waddell, Ethan Toder, Tanner Tomasi, and Tucker Elkins are out of the featured contest, which is 50 laps, and it's coming up after this. Heart pounding racing, photo finishes, wheel to wheel action. The My Place Hotels Quad Cities 150, presented by Hoker Trucking, brings dirt racing superstars to Davenport. Plus, the high speed extreme outlaw midgets presented by Toyota join in the action all three nights, August 24th through the 26th at Davenport Speedway. Tickets at worldofoutlaws.com or call 844 Dirt Ticks. Be there. The World of Outlaws Butt Kicker Late Model Series is brought to you by Butt Kicker. Feel what you've been missing. Pick up your Butt Kicker today at thebuttkicker.com. And by World of Outlaws Dirt Racing. Available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5. Drive like an outlaw. Welcome back to Williams Grove. We saw three action-packed heat races, two full last chance showdowns, and now we have 20 cars that are going to get ready to go green for 50 laps of green flag competition at the Grove. And if the heat races, especially that first last chance shutdown, you're seeing some of the two and three wide highlights here. That uh, this feature coming up is anything like that first last chance showdown. We are in for one whale of a race, Terry. We absolutely are. And you think of the storylines coming out of the heat races. Uh, Wilson wrecking coming to the line. You see it right here. Uh, he was that close uh, to getting his way. He went from achy breaky heart to boot scoot and buggy real quick. And uh, every other driver on the board. I mean, Kendall Tucker had a good one put in the battle uh, for the lead there. Logan Rumsey uh, winning his uh, winning his heat race. This uh, has tr I would put this up here and say that this has been the race of the season thus far. And you take a look at the racetrack that has been putting on all the action and excitement, the half mile. And keep in mind, your 2022 winner last season, Evan C. And Evan C. has a pretty darn good starting position here this evening to try to make it back to back at the Grove. Field begins to line up and get ready for what is going to be an action path. 50 lap green flag feature. Terry Redford, who's in our starting lineup. Well, teammates and uh, co-owners of Majula C Speed Shop, Blake Majulis and Evan C take up row one. Logan Rumsey and Dylan Yeager back there occupies row two with Kendall Tucker and JD Brown, uh, your top three rows with uh, Drew Hopkins, Colton Zimmer, and you got Brett Caudale back there uh, in row number five with Robbie Buchanan Jr. with Logan Herbert and Chase Barbara in row six. Taking you back there to row seven, where you're going to find Canada's own Tristan Lauderster and Dylan Wilson. And you're going to find Blake Murray, Chase Hardy, Caden Honeycutt, and Barrett Bishop, your top 18, and your final two starters here for this uh, beautiful feature race we have, Mike Augustine and Talon Willis. 
So 50 laps of excitement set to come out of field is beginning to form on the front straightaway. And you take a look at the, the track and you take a look at the temperature, beautiful day to go racing. They did a little bit of work after the last chance showdowns. They had about uh, three minutes or so of hot laps to try to work it in. And if it's anything like we saw earlier today, we're gonna see some uh, two, three, and you might even poke a four wide out of there too as we work forward for 50 laps. Final couple of drivers popping their way onto the grid. And as soon as they are all there, we will roll this field off. Uh, to, to quote the great Mr. Rogers, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Uh, and this is this has already been non-stop action. Hey, we got 50 more laps to go, and it's going to go in a blink of an eye here uh, at the Grove. A lot of these drivers have to understand you need to get every position early uh, because you heard what Logan Rumsey talked about and Blake Majulis. It's all about the strategy that's going to come into this racetrack. If, if we potentially have it to where they burn the tires up, Tim, we're not going to have much of a show there. And if you want to learn more about this series, uh, the World of Outlaws Buck Hager Late Model Series powered by iRacing, head to iRacing.com slash W-O-O-L-M. I use a lot of that website uh, for a lot of the research that we do before we go green flag racing and, and looking at standings over on that web page. Dylan Wilson sits fifth, Chase Barbara sits sixth, uh, Chase Barbara on the grid sits 12th, and Dylan Wilson sits 14th. So they have some work to do to get up to the front as you ride on with Mike Augustine. And there's another driver that's got some work to do. Mike Augustine is on the inside of row number 10. He's got a lot of work to do after that last chance showdown. So uh, Talon Willis to his outside, the rookie Barrett Bishop back there, qualifying series winner from a couple of years ago. Uh, back there in 18th, you've got a lot of stout competitors at the back of this field and they are gonna have to make their way back up to the front in very short order as next time by Terry, we will be going green. Oh, I'm telling you, I, I wish I had my smartwatch on because my my heart's beating. I've got chills thinking about how great this racing is going to be based off of our heat races and our last chance showdowns uh, that we've seen. Teammates started out for us. We'll see how aggressive Blake Majulis gets here on lap number one. It's Majulis and C getting ready to lead this field to green for 50 laps of competition as we get ready to throw the green on round number seven. And we are underway with this World of Outlaws Buck Kicker Late Model Series powered by iRacing feature. And quickly Majulis to the front, C trying to get second. And then it is a fight behind. Keep your eye on Logan Rumsey as he tries to pick up third. He'll do so. Dylan Yeager with great qualifying effort to the outside of Kendall Tucker. Kendall Tucker jammed it down there, battle for the race lead. C goes there, caution flag, waves, lap number one. And that uh, is not what C wanted to see because he had the run on Blake Majulis there for the race lead. And we're going to stack them back up. Yeah, first time feature transferee Brett Cuddell goes around. And uh, I believe it was a little bit of a checkup between maybe Zimmer and Robbie Buchanan. He was kind of stuck in the middle of uh, to bring out the first caution flag of the evening here at Williams Grove. And a uh, tough break for Brett. Uh, first feature he has made all season long. Uh, you get to round number seven, you finally make that first feature of the season, Terry, and uh, let's just say it doesn't go well. Here's the replay. Well, the only question that I wanted to ask when you said that he was stuck in the middle was there's jokers to the left of him and jokers to the right, and he just got turned. Uh, and there, uh, oh, Wilson gets in that as well. And uh, for Brett, not a whole lot of damage right there. Uh, he's going to be able to continue on here and. Uh, we'll see if uh, if he could drive back up there, start at seventh, see if he can come back up here and run out the top ten. The good news is that that first caution falls at the completion of lap number one. So, yeah, he's got some laps to try to get this thing right and back to the front. But Majulis and C going to line up on that front row with Rumsey and Jaeger in behind row number two. Dylan Jaeger, as we mentioned, great qualifying effort. Uh, was battling up there as well in the top five for the first uh, lap or so or three quarters of a lap that we did have. Uh, Kendall Tucker sits, sitting in position number five, J.D. Brown to the outside. Another one of those drivers that has made all the features so far this season, looking to make something happen as the field comes across. I believe we should be one to go here. 
Yeah, the pace lights on that uh, iRacing truck are off. We'll get ready to go back racing. The most entertaining thing out of the three-quarter lap that we saw there uh, was the 33. He was very aggressive getting into the corners on his teammate of Blake Majulis. Does he do that again? You also had Kendall Tucker uh, trying to look there for the third-place position. A, a lot of great stories up here in this top seven uh, that could unfold right before our very eyes this afternoon. Field is in command of the 127 of Blake Majulis as Majulis works through three and four. He is on the loud pedal. Green flag flies. We are back underway, and there goes Logan Rumsey to the inside of Evan C as they're going to battle for that runner-up position down into one. Yeah, and Logan Rumsey, they, they have history there. He moved C out of the way to get his win uh, a little earlier on at Knoxville. Does that come into fruition with them two racing around each other if the laps or when the laps run out of caution flag number two waves on lap number two? The second caution flag of the evening flies and uh, very uh, quick pace to those heat races, but a very, uh, maybe a little bit of a slower pace to the start of this feature. And I believe Chase Barbara was the one that got turned around in that one to bring out the yellow flag. And uh, again, right in the middle of the pack, right in the middle of the hornet's nest, Terry, where uh, everything does happen. He and Latticer, I believe, are the two that came together. Well, and he's on a streak right here from, from Port Royal all the way to I-55 of uh, a top seven finish and uh, the worst finish he had is Volusia with 19th made all the features thus far definitely was looking to come into this race and take a look at the replay to keep the momentum up and we'll see it right here of uh, what had taken place looks like oh he just got tagged I mean once again it's the same thing we saw there uh, with uh, with with Wilson just goes around the same thing we saw with called Dill just hey just just get punted into the corner and we saw Dylan Wilson kind of help him half save that thing, but uh, the sideways already for uh, for the caution flag to come out, Barney to throw that yellow flag. So uh, we'll slow the field down once again, and uh, we'll complete lap number two when we do go back to green. So a little bit of a slower pace to kick off this uh, World of Outlaws Buck Kicker Late Model Series uh, round number seven uh, at Williams Grove, and the field will come by this time. I believe we will get the one to go. And they will be back uh, double file and uh, get back to green flag racing. Hopefully these drivers can find a little bit of a rhythm here. Still a long race, 48 laps left to go. You know what you could also be doing while we're under the caution flag, Tim? What's that? You could head over to iRacing.com and use the 60% off to get yourself into the portal of the sim racing world. And maybe you could practice to be a part of the world of Outlaws Butt Kicker Late Model Series in the 2024 campaign. Yeah, you may be able to, as Blake Majul is going to lead this field to green, and we are going to immerse ourselves in the sights and the sounds of Williams Grove Speedway, and we are going to go full throttle as Blake Majulis does the same. That might have been all we needed to get some green flag racing in, Terry, as these guys are putting on a show. The front couple, as you saw there, kind of getting single file, finding a place to race in about fifth on back. We're still battling it out for some positions to try to get a little bit closer towards front. Oh, by the way, Evan C's looking for the lead, too. Yeah, you see the battle going on for the race lead. The battle's going on behind as well. Rumsey was trying to defend the spot from Kendall Tucker uh, during our full throttle moment. There was a, a lot of action going on around this track, but we have settled down uh, with the first two cautions coming on the first two laps. And I am, uh, I'm hoping we settle down for a long time. And if you're Evan C, 
you were really hoping to get the outside run as you look at J.D. Brown and Dylan Yeager here are battling for the fifth place position. Yeager was stuck on the outside of Kendall Tucker for a few laps and had to relinquish that position to the double zero. And now J.D. Brown trying to do the same thing, trying to get back to the inside and try to bring Colton Zimmer along with him. Up in front, Evan C. continues to kind of take the, the inside, kind of test the waters a little bit on Blake Majulis, but nothing doing as Dylan Yeager tries to get back to Kendall Tucker and try to get back to where he started in position number four. Yep, he, he's got J.D. Brown hounding him for that spot right now, for that fifth place position. I uh, didn't necessarily want to give it up, but you go back up here for the battle for the race lead. You take a look at the 33 of Evan C. from Chesney, South Carolina, trying to best his New York native teammate here uh, for that top spot, carrying the momentum uh, for Evan C. at the moment of top three finishes here this year. His worst finish being third, that's... I, I wish I had that kind of luck on dirt, but uh, he's definitely got it going on. And right now he's just looking to go ahead and pick up win number three on the season right here at the Grove. Yeah, both of these drivers fighting for their third victory and behind Logan Rumsey wants one more uh, to make it one. Kendall Tucker wants one more. So you're top four in the points, top four on the racetrack, albeit in a uh, little bit of a a jumbled up position from where they are in those point standings. Dylan Yeager on back. They want their first win of the year. So does J.D. Brown. J.D. Brown goes to the inside to uh, try to pick up one more back there as well as you ride on board. Uh, you see Brown trying to make that move again on Yeager and the double zero of Kendall Tucker. They're all battling it out in front of Colton Zimmer. What a great run for the 20 so far tonight. Hey, what an absolute amazing run uh, for the, the native down there. And I believe that's uh, I IA is uh, in no Iowa, right? Or Indiana? I think it's Iowa. Uh, it is Iowa, Urbantale, Iowa. It's just, uh, Tennessee education, everybody. But uh, Colton Zimmer, yeah, what a great run. He has been absolutely uh, flawless, but can he put the whole race together, Tim? I think that's going to be uh, the big key here as we go lap 15 on the board. I, I would really love to see him go up here and battle for this top five spot because he's been consistent, just keeps getting caught up in a whole lot of other stuff. You mentioned earlier about this big racetrack being a, uh, a game changer or a momentum changer on the season. Colton Zimmer's missed three races so far this year. The three that he has made, his best finish is 15th. Running in position number seven, he's doing what he needs to do to try to turn around his season and get these last three races after this evening a run to try to get whatever he can out of this 2023 season. As Evan C. continues to look, there's Blake Majulis. As Evan C. goes to the inside, gets to about the door or so on those, those power moves that he can make, but can't get any further on his teammate. Yeah, and his teammates led, uh, led 14 of them so far. He's, he's really just been smooth. He's running a very, uh, very good line. He's keeping anybody from getting underneath him to being able to put the throttle down off the exit of the corners. Uh, he's making Evan C work harder than I think he wants to work at this very moment. But it's also allowing something interesting. I don't necessarily think that Kendall Tucker, Logan Rumsey, and, and Dylan Yeager are actually back there driving as hard as they want to. I think they're just back there conserving that tire a little bit, hoping that if it goes longer, they're able to make this pass just a little bit easier once we get past the halfway point. You, you almost have to at this point, especially when you saw the first two laps and saw two cautions, you kind of have to save a little bit. But now we're seeing a different race start to play out as uh, I, I did see a little bit of contact back there between Zimmer and Buchanan off the uh, corner of our shot. So maybe these guys are, are not done with the, the hard racing for those positions as we are about to go 20 laps consecutive green here. Battle for 10th is what you're watching on your screen. Hopkins, Herbert in that red and white number six. In behind them is Latticer and Augustine from the back of this field. Where did he start, 19th all the way up here? Yeah, started 19th. Uh, worked his way up to the P13 position at the moment. He's going to try to take a look uh, there underneath Latticer, and he's underneath Herbert there. They almost went three wide, but thought better of it off the exit of turn two, and we go up just a little bit further. There's more racing. There's uh, there's Honeycutt all, or Hopkins. or Yeah, it is Honeycutt all the way to the outside. Paint schemes are very similar here this afternoon. He's trying to fight Zimmer for that seventh place position. Yeah, Honeycutt up from position number 17, I believe, on the grid, up to position number eight and battling with Zimmer 
for that spawn. And Robbie Buchanan Jr. right there as well. So they're going to dispatch Zimmer back two more spots to position number nine. And Buchanan looks to the inside as he goes on Honeycutt. A little bit of a slider up the hill. Not going to work. Honeycutt going to get that run off the corner. And Caden Honeycutt continues to roll towards what would be a top five effort. He's got a couple more spots to get there. J.D. Brown continues to work the inside of Dylan Yeager. You ride on board with Honeycutt looking back at the rest of the field. He's halfway towards his goal. Uh, yeah, the biggest mover as well. Up 10 position from where he started in P17. A little bit different from the disappointment that he had last week at I-55. Started up front, had the opportunity to win that race, was very dominant with Speed Ranch and just started falling through the field, could not uh, could not keep up with it. And that allowed Kendall Tucker to inch his way into that win as, wow, here we go, Logan Rumsey, he looked to the inside of uh, Evan C there for second. It's a three-way fight for the race lead. Was that a defensive line from Evan C that time out of the corner to try to keep Rumsey behind him? Rumsey goes to the inside, trying to get second place. Are we getting a little bit physical here for the lead, maybe, as we get ready to cross the halfway point in this one? Majulis leads, but Rumsey is the one that's on the move. Turn the Olivia Newton-John up to 100, because we're getting physical at the Grove. Logan Rumsey, he sailed it in there a couple laps ago, had the opportunity to make the run, make the contact, didn't do it. C looks underneath Majulis for the race lead, and he's gonna fall to the clutches of the 41, as we'll see if the move happens right here in the corner. There they go in the split screen for second and third. And oh, by the way, Kendall Tucker is closing in on this battle as well if they continue to race hard for that position. Majulis up high, C down low, Evan C in a bid for the lead on his teammate Majulis as they race down the straightaway, the 41 of Rumsey trying to get there in turn number three, but goes to the inside just by a nose. Up high goes Majulis, up high goes C, and we see a caution oh, high up in the air as the yellow flag flies for the third time here with uh, 23 to go, just past halfway. I'm no lip reader, but I don't think Logan Rumsey wanted to see that caution right there. Uh, I don't think any of the top three wanted to see the caution flag wave. They just got in a groove uh, here at this racetrack. And uh, great. I mean, that was great action going on there between Majula C and Rumsey. Uh, I think Logan Rumsey's got the long run car under him. That thing looks fast. Absolutely, it does. I believe Drew Hopkins has pulled it into the pit area and called it a day. Uh, tough break for the 157. He was one of those drivers that we saw in one of those earlier shots battling for about, I think it was 10th place or 11th place or so. So as those two uh, pull up under caution, Rumsey to the door of C as they uh, virtually discuss that battle that they just had for that runner-up position. Now it allows Blake Majulis to uh, see what he has for the lead, Evan C., uh, was challenging his teammate for that top spot, but could not make that move. So keep that uh, keep that in mind. As uh, Terry, once again, we saw the uh, season update come out last week for the World of Outlaws Dirt Racing. Great update, great game. Go to worldofoutlawsgame.com, PlayStation, Xbox platform. You'll have the Nintendo Switch coming up in October. There is a ton of great things around the physics that was provided by iRacing to make this game. I'm telling you, you, you will not be disappointed with this one at all. Yeah, get your hands on it now and uh, get ready to do some dirt racing with the World of Outlaws Dirt Racing, and especially with that 2023 season update that just came out last week. And speaking of update, Blake Majulis is ready to add some more laps to his laps led total here this evening. His next time by, I believe, uh, across the stripe, we are going to go Green flag racing. See to the outside. Rumsey and Tucker is row number two. Row number three is J.D. Brown and Caden Honeycutt. Dylan Yeager's falling to position number seven with Buchanan, Zimmer, and Herbert back there in car number six. As that is your top ten, and Blake Majulis is on it one more time. Green flag flies. We're back underway, completing lap number 28. Yeah, now you see the battle for P2. There they go. And, oh, Caden Honeycutt sailed that thing in there and almost got into the back bumper of, I believe that was Kendall Tucker who got to the outside. Now we'll go three wide with J.D. Brown. Caden uh, said, no, nope, I'm good. He backed out of that one. We'll do it again through the corner. And now we got a fight on our hands. And Kendall Tucker, he's under a lot of pressure for that fourth place spot right now. 
Dylan Yeager's moved to the inside. Dylan Wilson's moved to the inside. And Caden Honeycutt's moved to the middle. He was three wide for a moment there, but now he has to pull the sweat out of it and reset his sights. Tucker takes the fourth place position. And oh, by the way, Evan C trying to get that lead back again. Where do you watch here? Some great racing. I, I don't know, uh, but I know our production staff at High Race is absolutely phenomenal. They've got eyes all over this racetrack, giving us great pictures here around Williams Grove Speedway. There is action up front. There's action in the middle. There's action in the back. They should call this one the action track because it is all over the racetrack. Caden Honeycutt is fighting there with Tucker. He's going to slide it to the inside there. Then he's going to get J.D. Brown to try to look to the inside. And oh, yeah, here comes Robbie Buchanan Jr. And a battle for the race lead. We've seen some great racing this evening. Now less than 20 laps to go in round number seven at the Grove. And uh, you look at that battle for the lead up top, and then you kind of see that field kind of fan out in behind as Majulis holds that top spot, was on the inside. C was on the outside and got that run and now looks to the inside, gets that fender there, gonna pull even with Blake Majulis. Is this the move that sends Evan C to victory lane? What a run. What a run, and he's hunting for speed. You saw him turn one. He went to the outside. He'll do it again, but his teammate understood the assignment. He goes up there and cut that lane off. Rumsey goes there with him. But in three, I was surprised to see him take that inside lane with Majulis going all the way up against the wall. They both take the line. We'll see, can that bottom lane wake back up with 16 to go? Got a little bit of time to search and a little bit of time to figure it out as Majula C and Rumsey, your top three single file line. Top five or so kind of have this figured out back to uh, fourth place driver, Caden Honeycutt. Honeycutt has moved all the way from 17th to fourth, and I don't think he's done. I don't think he's done at all. He's sitting there in that fourth place position and he's waiting in the wings watching this top three fight it out. You saw Rumsey, he tried to slide it in there on C into the corner, but just had to back out of it. Couldn't carry the momentum on the bottom of the racetrack. Uh, Honeycutt was one of the first ones to go all the way to the outside wall. He tagged it right there. That's gonna allow Kendall Tucker to look to the inside. As they continue to battle, oh, he, up the oh, yeah, he missed it up the hill. There goes Tucker to the inside. There goes Buchanan. And lining up in behind is J.D. Brown. He's got to be on it this time. It's a fine line, Terry. And that number 10 of Honeycutt just crossed it, was able to get back that uh, those positions that he may have lost or was about to lose. But he lost a lot of ground in between him and those top three. Yeah, you talk about a fine line. It is a razor's edge here at this racetrack to not jump that cushion. And he's trying to catch up there. He knows he has a fast uh, late model. He understands that he could go up there and run with them. And hey, guess what? Caution flag waves. He gets a chance to restart fourth here behind our two race leaders. And it's Logan Herbert around in turn at number two or the completion of two, I believe. And oh boy. Uh, Mike Augustine got into him coming off of the corner and uh, just couldn't get off him. Uh, <laughs> that's what brought up the caution. We'll see uh, a replay hopefully in, in a moment. Uh, but Logan Herbert was running in the top 10, was, was running around the middle of the pack looking for a good run here this evening. And uh, considering his best finish this season is 17th, uh, he's still going to have to get up on the wheel and see what he can do from uh, the back of the field. Well, the one thing we've seen here tonight, well, at least in the early portion of it, is the, the, the passing is at a premium. You've been, you really have been able to make every single groove work on this racetrack. But as you see, the track starting to rubber in just a little bit right here. On the bottom, the middle starting to rubber in as well. You've seen the driver start to, uh, start to mitigate up to that outside lane. It's a, it's a weird dynamic that you've seen here because everybody just used up the bottom early and they were making passes in the middle of the racetrack. Now, it, it passes about to be at a premium. This restart, I, I think, is going to determine who our race winner is. Unless we get one more quick caution to see what uh, see what the rest of the field has. But I think Honeycutt is going to be the wild card in this, as you mentioned. Uh, up from 17th, up to position number four. Jump that cushion. Now has an opportunity to try to get back with what will be 12 laps to go when we go back to the green flag lights atop the pace truck have been extinguished so we will be going back green next time by with Majulis holding court and a couple of drivers coming out of pit road lattice are going to be caught a lot down as will Herbert uh, and they'll uh, restart the back of the field oh boy and, okay. and I meant 
and I mentioned that, I forgot we didn't count caution laps, so uh, they should be good to go, I think. I, I hope we stay on board right here for this restart, because this is where it's going to come uh, down to here. What does this 10 do? Because he's been he's been out there high, wide, and handsome on that outside lane. We're about to go race it, Tim. But where does he go to get by these, these two ahead of him and the one to the inside of Rumsey? Green flag flies. Battle for position number two. Here comes Rumsey to the inside. Needs to make something happen here. Needs to get up on the wheel. You saw Kendall Tucker try to get one done. Where does Honeycutt go? Well, he goes to the outside, Tim. That's what he wanted to do. He was hoping to track that 41 just on the low side. He's going to look to the inside of Evan C. His three wide for second. C got a little ways up the hill, allowed Honeycutt to kind of explore that back bumper, explore that inside. But that's about all it was. Rumsey has been dispatched to position number four, and now Honeycutt needs to get two more. But how does he get it? They'll come by this time to 10 to go. Okay. The 10 of Caden Honeycutt has been faster than Evan C. Uh, two laps consecutive since we took that, uh, that that green flag there. Can he get that position number two and challenge Blake Majulis for win number one? It's win three for first and second, but win number one for the driver in the third place position right here. He looks to the inside, but can't make it work down the back. As they continue to battle, they're trying to break away from the rest of the field. A little bit of separation back from Rumsey. As I say that, Rumsey goes to the inside now. Honey got one small little miscue from Caden. Honey got allows the 41 to get to the inside. And that's all it was. In behind Robbie Buchanan Jr. Great run for the 31 as he's up in the top five. Yeah, all of these drivers right here, they have been inches. I mean, you literally could put a piece of paper in between all four of these drivers in the center of the corner and off of exit. We're going to come to seven laps to go here. And you take a look at the onboard for Honeycutt and Rumsey here in third and fourth. They're right on top of the leaders. If C and Majulis make contact, they're in the catbird seat here. But don't sleep on Robbie Buchanan Jr. in fifth either. But you got to start making a move here. You got to start showing your cards just a little bit. Yeah, you still have seven laps to go. Make it six this next time by across the stripe. But you got to do something here to try to make it happen. Try to get a win here in this series. Two of the best to do it. Majulis and C out in front of the field. Can anybody get a hold and try to make a move? Here comes the first one. Rumsey took that look to the inside. Well, Tim, I think uh, you kick it back to an old legend of Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold him, know when to fold him, and know when to walk away when the deal is done. Caden Honeycutt gets the caution flag out again. He was looking to the inside of C for second, and man, this action has been phenomenal. And you talked about it, Tim. Late race restart. We'll get it with six laps to go. And it's Logan Herbert again, but this one was. Uh... He uh, he got into Talon Willis. Willis, I believe, just barely got the crossover on the back straightaway. And Logan Herbert, nowhere to go. A tough break for those two drivers. Talon Willis, uh, we talked about him during the last chance showdowns. Starting off his rookie season really, really well. Two top ten finishes. We thought this might be Talon Willis's season, at least, uh, if not for... Uh, for that for rookie of the year as you look at the 10 car white 10 with the green trim uh crossover right there oh. is where he hits and right there there goes nowhere to go for uh, logan herbert uh and the caution flag will fly but willis missed the last four features makes this one he's not going to see the finish of it though yeah, and that's, uh, that's tough, but we talked about the reset uh, when we left I-55 last week coming into this race. Uh, and for him to at least make the feature, while he's not going to finish it here this afternoon, he could say, okay, I'm good enough to make the feature. And then when we go next week, uh, okay, I'm good enough to make the feature. You have to be able to put that out there, but hey, you could put yourself out there in the 2024 uh, World of Outlaws Late Model Butt Kicker Series. If you go to iRacing.com today, 15th anniversary sale, 60% off. And if you're a member on iRacing right now, and you've been a member for the past 15 years, there's $15 in iRacing credits to have a hosted session with your buddies, to just get on here and have all the fun you want. iRacing.com is your portal to the sim racing world. Be a part of the greats, and hey, maybe you'll be racing here next season with us. Am I invited to your hosted session with all your buddies? 
Yeah, come out and race with us. We'll uh, we'll do something crazy and weird. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we, we'll do that after uh, the next five laps or so, because Pace Truck is in. It's a single file restart with Blake Majulis going to lead this field to green, and they snake around this racetrack. Who's the one to make the first move? I, I think that single file restart was in the perfect advantage for the 127 of Blake Majulis right there. He got a monster start. C tried to close into the corner, but that allowed them to single file and stay with a decent gap. C is going to try to sail it in there quite a bit, but he's going to lose off the exit of the corner. You see him back there four wide in the corner, but the battle for the race lead and the race win uh, is definitely heating back up. Yeah, it's around Hardy and uh, Zimmer and, and Wilson, those guys that might have struggled earlier in this race trying to get everything that they can, but up in front, the 127 of Majulis. There goes the 10. Honeycutt goes to the inside, tries to make something on C. How hard does he sail it into the corner? Oh, he caught the wall just a little bit right there, slowed his momentum, allowed Rumsey to get close in just a little bit more. Honeycutt's been used to running that outside lane. Now he's having to work the bottom. You take a look at the battle for the race lead. You take a look at the race for the sixth place position. That's where the Hornets' nest rides. It's single file up front for the first five, and it's two by two all the way through the rest of the field, sixth on back. Yeah, where did Barrett Bishop come from in that battle? All the way mired back to 18th, I think, on the start. He's knocking on the door of a top five effort late in this one. But they will come by this time, and Blake Majulis will see the white flag at a turn number four. Little contact in behind them for that sixth place spot. But the white flag is out from Barney. Final lap at the Grove. Does Evan C have anything left for his teammate? Rumsey runs in a third, trying to get one little last ditch effort. Through three and four this time, Blake Majulis is going to come out of four, and he is going to return to victory lane. Blake Majulis is your winner at the Grove. Second going to belong to Evan C. Logan Rumsey in third. Man, what a run for Caden Honeycutt. He comes up in fourth, and Robbie Buchanan in fifth. But Blake Majulis, that's a huge statement after the last couple weeks. That's what he needed to do. Come in here, show up, and show out. And Kendall Tucker fell back to seventh there. That points lead that you're going to see here in just a little bit for Evan C is going to grow, but Blake Majulis might have jumped him there. Majulis is going to have a little bit of momentum, to say the least, but Evan C, it's still a, a podium finish. It's still a top two finish uh, for Evan C, and uh, we'll talk to him after this one. Uh, finishing in second, Logan Rumsey in a third. Caden Honeycutt, Robbie Buchanan Jr., your top five. Chase Hardy, Kendall Tucker uh, back to seventh. Barrett Bishop up to eighth. Dylan Wilson after uh, a horrendous night to really start off this thing in ninth. And J.D. Brown coming home in tenth. Chase Barbara, 11th. Dylan Yeager falls to 12th at the finish of this one. Blake Murray, 13th. Colton Zimmer, 14th. Tristan Latticer in 15th. Mike Augustine, Man, Logan Herbert had a tough run tonight. He finishes in 17th. Talon Willis in 18th. 19th is Drew Hopkins. And Brett Cottle makes a feature, but it's going to be a 20th place effort for the driver of the 93. What a run of this evening up in front. Very entertaining feature. And I believe, Terry, you have caught up with our winner, Blake Majulis. Well, Blake Majulis, you have had, uh, I would say, the worst two weeks you've had here in this series ever. And you come back with a statement win here at the Grove. How much does this win right here mean to you? Uh, it would mean a lot more if we were a little better in points, but uh, wins a win and, um, you know, some more cash. So that's kind of what we're going for now, as many wins as we can get and um, just keep the good runs going and, uh, you know, represent the, the brand and, and all of our drivers and just support them. So not giving up. And, um, yeah, you know, obviously a good night tonight. Uh, I've been second, so another one, too. And, uh, yeah, I, I was I was uh, pretty nervous there. He, they were all pretty close, and I wasn't real uh, – I used my right rear up. Um, a lot sooner than they did, so um, I think they had a lot more tire than I did, but I was able to hold on there once the top came in, and uh, thankfully it rolled my way. So uh, everything just went smooth tonight and went my way, and uh, that's how you got to have things go to win these races. Well, you, you talk about wanting to get the most cash to represent the team and the drivers on, on your team. We go to Eldora next week. Do you think that's another track that you could potentially walk into and hope that Evan C has a bad run and you do what you did here tonight, win in the pole and win in the race? Yeah, I think um, 
I think we were really good the last two weeks. It's just, it's unfortunate if you have a bad qualifying run, you can't dig yourself out of a hole. Um, it's just so difficult. It's almost impossible. So uh, the last two weeks haven't been good, but you know, if we were, you know, if we just need some luck, if you never know what can happen, I guess. But uh, for now, I'm just trying to race for these wins. And hopefully if uh, things fall my way, then things will fall my way. We'll just find out at the end. Well, congratulations on your win here tonight at the Grove, and we'll see you next week at uh, at Eldora. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. Congrats on the win. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it very much. That's Blake Majulis, the driver of the 127, getting it done. And we got Evan C., his teammate, who's going to come home P2 this afternoon. You keep your streak of top threes alive here uh, in this series, and you has extended your points lead by a little bit over Kendall Tucker. Uh, just walk me through that race, that single file restart uh, there on the last restart we saw. What did you need to go past your teammate of Blake Majulis? Uh, you know, he's going to have to make a mistake there or – uh, you know, I was just going to have to get a pretty big, big run on him to make it pass. Um, you know, it was a pretty tough track to pass on tonight. Uh, you know, I thought maybe once it got up to the top that, uh, you know, it would open up the bottom middle back up, but it stayed pretty uh, slick down there. And, uh, you know, just couldn't really get a run on anyone unless they got into the wall or, or got tight and went up the track. But, uh, I mean, I felt pretty good in there. Like we was uh, a little bit better than Blake in the beginning and the middle and then, uh, you know, it seemed like those last 10 laps we kind of equaled out, but, uh, you know, it's still a good night for us and, a, you know, a good night for uh, CFME Sports and uh, you know, had a lot of cars up in the top 10 tonight. Well, he talked about that he thought that you and Logan potentially had more right rear tire than he did. Did you feel at any point in time that you'd be able to make the slide job into the corner or was you just content to ride until the final 10? Yeah, I was looking for maybe uh, a slider and, and one and two if I could get a good run because uh, you know, I just felt like I was a little bit better in the middle part of the race uh, than Blake was. But, I mean, I, I can just never really get that good of a run on him, and I didn't want to throw anything that, you know, I wouldn't clear him and then get past my Logan on the top or, uh, you know, anything like that. And that would just hurt me even more than, uh, you know, running second. So, uh, it's kind of just how it is, and, you know, it's unfortunate that the track kind of went, went that way tonight. But, you know, like I said, still had a, a pretty good run tonight, and, you know, we're looking forward to the next three races. Well, yes, sir. Congrats on your P2. That's Evan C. keeping his top three streak alive here this afternoon, and we'll see him next week at the Eldora Speedway. Uh, we'll grab uh, we'll grab Logan Ramsey as well, who comes home third. You've had a very uh, consistent bit of runs here uh, in this series, where well, you've you've walked it with fourth, first, and eighth, and tonight you get third. How much does this one mean to you uh, to come home and get a podium again? Yeah, I mean it's it's really good. Um, I just came into um tonight trying to beat Dylan Wilson and Kendall Tucker. We did that. Just try to um gain some points on Wilson and try to get back into second in points. And um that's what we did. Um, I felt like I had a really good car there. Just couldn't really um get the job done on Evan there. But um overall, it's a really good night. Well, you had a very good race back there with Caden Honeycutt. You two battled it out for the latter part, uh, maybe 15 laps. How cool was it sitting up there, saving your stuff, but not also not necessarily putting yourself in a bad position either? Yeah, Caden came from way in the back there and started running the top and kind of showed everyone the line. I was gonna just going to um, keep running the bottom, saving my tires a little bit, but then um, I had to get up there to compete with those guys, so... Um, it definitely wasn't. Um, it was a harder race than I thought it was going to be, but um, it was a pretty good show. Well, congratulations here on this top three finish. That would be now your fourth top five finish of the season. That's P3, Logan Rumsey, Tim Terry, and, well, that's going to do it for our top three. Yeah, a great run here at the Grove, and you mentioned it. You're uh, you're excited for next week. Before we get there, let's take a look at those championship standings. And Evan C uh, opens up to 80 points over Logan Rumsey, but Kendall Tucker uh, right there. Little exchange for position number two after this week. Blake Majulis, uh, Dilla Wilson, top five, and then you look at that bubble there. Uh, the comers and goers uh, in that one as uh, Latticer now on the outside. Uh, Robbie Buchanan on the inside, Mike Augustine on the good side of that one as well. Well, you talked about it week two at Fairbury that we were going to look at points all season long. And 
it changes consistently. I mean, we saw Desmond Busby was out a couple weeks ago. He's in by a, a good margin now. Robbie Buchanan Jr. has put himself in by a good margin as well. We'll have to see what Tristan Lattister does. He jumped up into the points here to the one spot outside the cut line uh, with his top 15 finish. But Damian Kiefer falls out even further here uh, going into Eldora next week. The points are going to be ever so crucial as we start to wound down this season. Absolutely. And next week we head to Eldora. I was I was excited to, to get to this, Terry, because I know you love this racetrack. Oh, my goodness. It was uh, the one of the first dirt races I ever watched was the Eldora Million sitting in a discord with a ton of my buddies. I love this speedway. Nothing says slinging some dirt like Eldora Monday, August 28th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We go to my Mecca Center of dirt racing. And final race before that Labor Day break. So uh, be sure to join us next Monday and we'll set up round number eight of the World of Outlaws Buck Kicker Late Model Series powered by iRacing. Great show at the Grove. Congratulations to Blake Majulis. He is back in victory lane with Evan C. Another podium finish in behind. He will lead the points heading in to Eldora. On behalf of our entire iRacing production crew and Terry Radford, my name is Tim Terry. We will see you next week from Eldora when we say let's go racing. Until then, keep the hammer down and we'll see you at the track. Division is home to the greatest shows on dirt. The only place to watch World of Outlaw Sprint Cars, the pinnacle of dirt racing. You also get World of Outlaw Late Models, the Super Dirt Car Series, Extreme Outlaw Midgets, Dirt Car Summer Nationals, and weekly racing at America's premier tracks. See them all with a Dirt Vision Fast Pass. Flexible options allow casual and hardcore fans to live stream races on multiple devices. Sign up now at DirtVision.com or on the Dirt Vision app. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.